Hi, this is Kim Watson here. In this short video, I'm going to hopefully put a relatively simple explanation to uh, the movement of the markets in terms of, I get questions and we see questions here of, well, why, why is the dollar being sold and the equities are going up, the equities are being sold, the dollar's going up. What, what, what's, what's the reasoning behind this? Um, generally people will come back with it's regarding risk off risk on but I just thought well I'll give you a little bit more detail so uh, a little bit more detail hopefully simple uh, detail and just look at those factors Th this these terms risk on risk off are sort of semi relatively new although or they're, they're more more people are probably more aware of them because it's sort of more headline grabbing risk off and risk on and anyway so uh, let's just look at what's happening so risk off basically excuse the writing here um, I should have been a doctor um, so risk off what's ha what's actually happening uh, trade oh, I say traders but uh, there's there's fear into the markets uncertainty into the markets creates risk off in in those terms uh, equities are generally, and I say this generally, um, are, are generally sold. Uh, so in normal circumstances, equity would get generally sold on risk off. The uh, dollar uh, gets bought, it's, or it, it gains. Uh, you see stre strength coming through on the dollar. Uh, commodities, um, as the dollar gets stronger, commodities effectively, price-wise, dollar-denominated uh, uh, commodities, the price is reducing. So that, that's what we see generally on risk off and on risk on, uh, basically equities uh, are being bought, the dollar is running down and commodities often rise as well. So a, a lot of commodities here, the dollar is perceived as weaker um, and yet uh, the, the uh, dollar price of commodities is rising. So that's that's it in a nutshell in what in terms of what's happening there the why the why behind this well it's just look at the flows of money and I'll sh then show you some correlations between some different markets so flow of the market then one thing to bear in mind here is the stock market isn't a necessary a, a indicator of true economic strength. Now we've seen this for some time in the US for example where we've seen all, new all-time highs in the S&P, the Dow and the Nasdaq but part of that there's there's a reason sitting behind part of that is money would uh, in terms of normal safety uh, goes to um, where it can get some yield it's looking for yield now if interest rates are zero percent or pretty close to it then the, the big money hasn't got no sorry drawn that right. the, the big money just doesn't haven't got the yield it is where they're going to put the money so the money has run it towards equities and commodities etc where they may get some yield so um, th this this is where why we've seen the s and ps running um, a lot of the time against what would be the overall trade I say the s and ps but the the your uh, US markets and some of the other markets are running well, well beyond where you would expect them in the time we've got COVID, we've got lockdowns, we've got everything expecting. There's so little yield to be had here. The investment money needs to go somewhere and it will go in other forms. There are other yields out there and better than zero percent, but generally there's, there's perceived benefit in, in terms of elsewhere, uh, elsewhere, elsewhere into equities and commodities etc so um, that in, in itself has effectively pushed the dollar down over the goodness knows how many months now no to no amount of maneuvering by different uh, uh, central banks I mean that we've seen the Fed they, they've actually stayed quite uh, uh, tight on the, the fact that um, they're not going to be uh, increasing rates anytime soon um, they, they probably quite like the uh, softer uh, US dollar it helps their exports massively so in, in a sense the feds don't want to show, rock the boat too much and I know they'll refer to it, inflation rates and everything else but they don't want to rock the boats unlike what we've seen with Australia today the Australians have basically um, I know I put a D in there so the Aussie dollar uh, basically the Australians have said uh, that it's, uh, was it 2024 before they see it, uh, potentially increase uh, in Europe we've had, had the uh, European region um, suggesting that uh, no rate increases um, for some time and even looking at uh, up until early mid last week they were talking about rate cuts further rate cuts so again it's all this posturing that's going on here almost to 
see who can break because the Aussie effectively um, from Australia's point of view is too strong um, the euro from the European's point of view compared to where it was with the uh, US dollar is too strong so they want to bring these down in, in a sense the the weak dollar has, has benefited the US uh, quite considerably. As I say, exports are cheaper for others to be buying in. It brings more, more cash into the country. So that's that part of it. Then let's go and look at um, how foreign capital m moves, actually. And th this sort of gives you a bit of an idea. With uh, a weaker dollar, uh, foreign capital also comes into these equities. So you're seeing, f because they, they can buy the chair shares effectively cheaper because they're getting more dollars for their, their pound or their euro or whatever they're doing. So effectively it becomes a, a, a sort of discount. As, this, as the stock price rises, well, they, of course they're gaining. If the dollar starts then turning, well, there's a dollar gain as well. So uh, they can start taking a, an appreciation at both ends of it effectively on both sides of it. Right, let's clear that and let's look at some markets and just, uh, just going to drag these across and just show you some some of the correlations or negative correlations, inverted correlations if you like between some. So here I've just got gold um, in yellow here and I've just put the dollar futures here, the um, US dollar. So you can see generally and it is a very general at times of course things run a lot further uh, one way and they do come out of sync but quite often with your peaks and the troughs are not too dissimilar and you can see it's quite an inverted relationship now if we take gold out of the, um, the equation here if I can do that and oops I put it back in again and we'll put the S&Ps in so you've got the now you've got the S&Ps compared to the dollar and you can see that the peaks and troughs here and so this is why you'll see that um, you, as the dollar's being sold, uh, the, we expect equities to uh, to rise and vice versa. Doesn't always happen. This is, is this has gone at times completely, and it's I mean it's continued since sort of. Uh, let me just use the mouse here for a moment. It, it's literally from back at this sort of stage here. Well, the equity market has largely still gone up. Now we may be in for a bigger correction. We'll see how things run through here. But at the moment, the dollar going up. Um, in value effectively as is um, the equities at the moment and it could just carry on that way as as investors push in that way but um, you know, push that way it can come out of sync for tight periods and I wouldn't be surprised if we see a bit more of that so that's one uh, pairing the two pairings we've seen gold um, if you put um, take off the futures now and just look at um, the relationship between bonds and the dollar here quite tight so it's, it's similar shows some lagging going on here but generally you can see that uh, 10 year T notes uh, T bills are, um, are, are tightly correlated there so you can see the correlation there so as the, um, the, the uh, dollar has been coming down effectively in value overall as has the value of these two T notes okay um, popping in uh, there you go that's I think that's probably it I mean I'll throw some oil into the thing so we've got another commodity in relation to the dollar index here and um, so what we've got here we've got dollar index versus uh, oil and again inverted inverted largely of course there's, there's spikes and we saw some spikes if you went back last year at certain points so the oil just ran off at the moment again we're seeing um, as we're seeing with the equity market here we're seeing a, a, a a drop off of this it's gone posit uh, positively correlated rather than inversion inverted and it question you, you start questioning at what point something's going to go either the dollar index or oil <laughs> which which going to come but this is effectively for all at the moment this is true gaining in value so it's actually gaining in value because the dollar's getting stronger as is oil um, so there we are okay i hope that helps it's it just shows what as i say the risk off and to uh, to summarise that again, risk off shows the money flows towards the uh, dollar uh, and other risk currencies on occasion. Uh, the yen's lost that at the moment, um, so that's risk off. When risk comes back on, the stocks gain, the dollar starts weakening, and commodities start effectively in dollar terms increase in price. And remember, a lot of these uh, commodities are based in dollars, so you'll see a natural increase there it doesn't actually mean to say in 
any other currency that the, the, the value of these commodities are rising so much, but a lot of them are just trading in the dollar, so they're seen as rising in, in price. I'll leave it with you. Have, I hope you find this useful. Let uh, me know if there's other, other questions regarding this. Um, please, um, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, do like and, of course, uh, subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Bye for now.